In this video, we're looking at what's new in Reaper 5.982. If you like these changelog overview videos, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and consider being a patron. I got a lot of exclusive content on the Reaper blog Patreon. We'd love to have you there. All right, so the first one is actually from the previous update, 5.981, with automation items, obey preference to pool automation items when duplicating or pasting tracks. So let's put in an item, empty MIDI item on this track, bring up the volume automation lane and we'll draw in an automation item and we'll just put in a point here so that we know this is doing something right let's look in the preferences and go to editing behavior automation now there is this option pool source data when pasting automation items and then another one when copying with tracks or media items so by default this is off and by default this is on so let's just look at that so if i duplicate this item the automation item below will also duplicate like this and so these are actually linked items you can move them left and right they're not linked that way like a group would with items um, but the any points that i change here inside of one will affect the other and you can know that they're grouped uh, or pooled by the number on the actual automation item. So, um, and you can kind of override this by turning that off. The baseline amplitude affects pooled copies. So with that on, these two are the same. And if we duplicate the track, you'll see that these are uh, duplicates. So they all have the same automation item number. So even though they can be independently moved on different tracks, all those uh, adjustments to this automation item are linked. So now let's turn this off. So when copying with tracks or media items, it's turned off. Um, if we duplicate an item, this is a new automation item. This is completely independent. I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna duplicate. And now with that second option turned off as well, all of these um, items on the duplicate track are independent. Well, actually, these first two, because they were pooled on the first track, um, they are pooled, but it's a new pooled item. So it's a new copy. So items on track one don't affect the automation items on track two. And this one here is independent. So just always check for those numbers if you are not sure. One more thing to check here is that uh, copy and paste work the way we expect. So if I copy this one, I move to another position and I paste it, is that a, a pooled duplicate or is that its own independent item? And it is an independent item you can see by the number changing. Back into the preferences, let's turn both of these on. I will duplicate the track and these are all linked. So this, so item number three on both tracks is linked, item two and item one is all linked. And as well, copy, paste, that will make a duplicate. So these are all linked now. So there you go, lots of different options now with the pooled uh, automation items, whether you want them on by default or not. Next, let's look at some changes to media items. There are two new actions that affect forcing offline of media items. This is something you would use if you want Reaper to not check for um, items that are being altered outside of Reaper, or if that's something that you've uh, imported into the project, but it's on another drive uh, in your current project, so you don't want it to keep looking or uh, substituting files or something like that. So you can actually force it to be offline and then later on relink it. So I'm just going to import an item here on its own track. Let's look for, in the action list, force. Item force media offline. So if I run this, go back to the uh, media view, see this overlay forced offline. We open up source properties. It has saved the original file path. 
and it set the, the file type as offline wave. So the project file will keep the data for that uh, wave file, but it's not going to look for it when you open up the project. So it's not going to warn you that files are missing, things like that. Uh, this is something you can set manually. And to undo this, you just run the same action again, force media offline, and now it's back. There's another action that deals with takes. So if you have multiple takes, you can set all of the takes that are inactive, not in use, to offline. So I'm actually going to uh, copy and then paste as a new take in this item. But now I've got a bunch of different takes. They're all the same, but maybe I'll just maybe change the timing of some of these so that they look a bit different. Okay. Now I'm going to use this action item force inactive take media offline. So if I run this, now these other takes are offline. It'll probably save some disk use um, playing back because these other media items don't need to be managed. And this is kind of a, a less permanent solution to like crop to active take or something like that. So Reaper doesn't have to keep track of these files until they're actually in use. In 5.980, we got uh, per item rulers. And since then, we now have a couple new options like a per item beat ruler. So if we go to the item settings, display item ruler, we have many more options here now. So we've got item beats, constant time signature, item beats, minimal constant time signature. So let's just enable this one. And now we have this little ruler below the item. And that's going to show us the position within the item. So if we zoom into the middle of this item, we know that this is beat two of this loop. And again, we can go to item settings, display item ruler. And if we go to item ruler settings, we can actually use a different time signature. Um, we can set this to minimal beats display. If we want a 6-4 ruler on this, and hit apply, and we got this on minimal, so it's only going to show me the beats. Or the numbers are only going to show the beats. If we show this again, oh, I don't have the item selected. Showing this again uh, from my recent actions list, if we turn off minimal display, hit apply, you can see that there's numbers on all of the main um, beats. So the default is to not have a ruler. We have item time. We have item in uh, hours, minutes, seconds, frames. We have item beats and source time and source time code. The main ruler in the Reaper window has also been updated. So we can choose both primary and secondary units separately. So right now I have this on uh, measures beats with seconds as the secondary unit. And that's kind of been the default for a long time. To change this, we can right click in here and go to secondary time unit. And it's on minutes and seconds, but we could set this to hours, minutes, seconds, frames. And now we have both a time code and a musical grid shown. We can also get to this through the view menu. So view, time unit for ruler, secondary unit, and the options are none, minutes and seconds, seconds, samples, hours, minutes, seconds, frames, and absolute frames. If you want to use a musical grid for the ruler, that needs to be the main one. You can't choose measures beats as a secondary unit. There's actually a bunch more things in this update if you want to check out the change log. Lots of little bug fixes, lots of really specific things that will help specific workflows. But for now, this is all I want to show, and thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.